Good morning, guys. Today we're going to be talking about DNA in more depth. Let's get started. All right, so first off, what is DNA? DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. We'll talk more um, later in this lesson about how DNA got this name. DNA carries the genetic information from our parents. And it's also like, think of it like an instruction manual for making every single protein in your body. That's why DNA is so important and why you need it to survive. All right, so where is DNA? In eukaryotes, DNA is found in the nucleus. But in prokaryotes, because they don't have a nucleus, DNA is in the cytoplasm. And as a reminder, it's in this shape called a plasmid, which is just a circle. All right, so what does this structure of DNA look like? So DNA is double-stranded. So here's what this means. Follow along with my pointer. I've got like one string of DNA here connected with the second string of DNA here. String or strand. It's double stranded. Now these strands are complementary, which means they fit together perfectly, just like two puzzle pieces would. And we'll talk about how that works later on. Now DNA forms this shape called a double helix, which you can see here just looks like a twisted ladder shape. All right, so DNA is made out of smaller pieces called nucleotides. What is a nucleotide? A nucleotide has three parts. So one is a sugar, that's this hexagon thing here. And this name of the sugar is called deoxyribose. So that's how DNA gets its name, deoxyribonucleic acid. The second thing a nucleotide has is a phosphate. That's that circular P thing here. <clears throat> and then the last thing is something called a nitrogenous base. That's this rectangle here. Now you're going to find out in a second that there's four types of nitrogenous bases. All right, so just like a simplified drawing, here's what um, a nucleotide looks like. We have our phosphate, we have our sugar, and we have a nitrogenous base. All right, so on your notes page, you need to pick a nucleotide on your diagram. Go ahead and circle it, and then label each of the three parts. All right, so next we're talking about nitrogenous bases. Nitrogenous bases, or nitrogen bases, are the parts that are really important, and they actually carry the genetic information. So there are four types of nitrogenous bases, and they have these crazy names. Adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. All right, we're gonna find out in a second that we always have an adenine partnered with a thymine and a guanine partnered with a cytosine. So the order that we have these nitrogenous bases, like adenine, thymine, guanine, is going to tell the ribosome what proteins to make. So like I said, when bases pair up, we always put an adenine with a thymine. Sometimes we abbreviate this A with T. And we also always have a guanine with a cytosine or a G with a C. So here's just a picture of what this looks like. So as a reminder, we have our um, nitrogenous bases here. And so this C is a cytosine, and this G is a guanine. And you can see they fit perfectly together, just like puzzle pieces. Here we have our thymine and adenine, another guanine and cytosine, another adenine and thymine. It always works this way. This is a rule you have to memorize. All right, so on your diagram right now, I've given you on, um, on your DNA, ooh, each of the nitrogenous bases on one half. So you need to fill in what's going to be which nitrogenous base we'll have on the other half. So example, in this top part here, I have a T, which always goes with an A, an adenine. So I'd write an A here. All right, so you need to fill out this whole DNA strand. 
All right, next. So we call part of our DNA the backbone. And the backbone is just like, remember how we called DNA a twisted ladder? We'll picture the background, the backbone like, like the sides of that ladder. And it's made of the sugar and phosphate. And these are head, held together with really strong bonds. Think of a bond like glue. So it's really hard to break the sugar and phosphate. All right, so then the rungs, these parts right here, are the bases. And they're actually held together with weak bonds. They're called hydrogen bonds. So picture it like really weak glue or kind of like Velcro. And that's actually super important because there are going to be times that your DNA has to rip in half and separate those bases. And so those weak hydrogen bonds make that possible. All right, so now we're gonna move forward to talking about genes. Genes are just several nucleotides together. Um, one gene is the instruction manual to build one protein. So in all, your DNA has about 25,000 genes. So your DNA can make tons and tons and tons of proteins you need to survive. So this is super important. This is why we call your DNA an instruction manual to build proteins. All right, so on your notes page, with that same DNA diagram, you need to circle one gene. Now, you can see an example right here. One gene has been circled. So use that as an example to help you circle a gene on your notes page. All right, and then we have chromosomes. You guys should already know about chromosomes. Um, but so right before a cell divides in mitosis, it coils up its DNA strands. And these coils are called chromosomes. You guys know that. So as a reminder, though, a chromosome is just an X-shaped structure of DNA. In every single cell that you have, you have 46 chromosomes. And last but not least, we have this thing called a karyotype. So scientists make karyotypes to study chromosomes. So what they do is they take a cell, they crack it open, open the nucleus, pour out all 46 chromosomes that you have in one cell, and they line them up like this. This is 46 chromosomes in all. And so the purpose of a karyotype is to allow students or scientists and students to examine chromosomes for disorders, all right? So we're gonna talk more about karyotypes later this semester, but I just wanna give you a brief introduction. All right, you have finished the lesson for today. Follow these directions on this slide to go ahead and finish labeling your DNA diagram on your handout.